There have been 56 presidential elections over the course of U.S. history, but America has never seen an election quite like this. Voters have been put to the test this season to elect the best candidate to serve as the next commander in chief. And in a historical move, the GOP chose a complete party outsider to serve as their nominee. One America's Rachel Roboto takes a look back on Trump's path to the White House. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I am officially running for President of the United States. It all started on June 16th of 2015, with an iconic trip down the stairs and a rally from the Trump Tower in New York City. Donald Trump, a businessman who went into the race as an underdog in a poll of politicians, became the 12th Republican candidate to announce his presidential bid. And from there, his uphill battle to the nomination began. Less than two months after his announcement, he took on 16 candidates in the first Republican debate, after placing high enough in the polls to make it to the main debate stage. Trump came out swinging, hitting hard on America's economic turmoil and bringing the issue of illegal immigration back into the forefront of this political cycle. We need to build a wall, and it has to be built quickly. Our leaders are stupid, our politicians are stupid, and the Mexican government is much smarter, much sharper, much more cunning, and they send the bad ones over because they don't want to pay for them. And it was blunt, unfiltered answers like this one that several GOP candidates unsuccessfully took aim at. The weakest person on this stage by far on illegal immigration is Jeb Bush. They come out of an act of love, whether you like it or not. He is so weak on illegal immigration, it's laughable, and everybody knows it. A matter you of are principle, the and I'll, single and I'll tell biggest you. liar. You probably are worse than Jeb Bush. You are the single biggest liar. Vote, vote for Ted Cruz. This is the same thing he did to Ben Carson. This guy will say anything. Nasty guy. Now I know why he doesn't have one endorsement from any of his colleagues. But the movement had already begun as Americans were hooked on Trump's relatable persona and his approach to tearing down political correctness. They say we're outspoken. We need to take lessons from Donald Trump if we're going to if we're really going to learn it. Hey, here's the thing about Donald Trump. Donald Trump's hitting a nerve in this country. He is. He's hitting a nerve. And Governor Kasich was right. In fact, his image as a political outsider, his continued calls to end corruption in Washington, and his applauded self-funded campaign worked to his advantage in the primaries. The primary elections kicked off on February 1st with the Iowa caucus, where Trump came in just three percentage points behind Senator Ted Cruz. And while Trump may have lost that battle, he ended up winning the war, managing to dominate seven of the 10 key swing states, including a big win on March 1st, the first Super Tuesday of the 2016 presidential election cycle. This has been an amazing evening. Already we've won five major states. His success in the primaries forced 14 of his Republican opponents out of the race, leaving just two rivals left, Senator Ted Cruz and Ohio Governor John Kasich. Then, after after a landslide win in Indiana on May 3rd, Trump was crowned the presumptive Republican presidential nominee. But the obstacles just kept coming for the Washington outsider as party leaders behind the Never Trump movement attempted to hijack the election and prevent Trump from securing the GOP nomination. However, this push to drive Trump out of the race backfired. And on July 19th at the Republican National Convention in Cleveland, Donald Trump humbly accepted the party's nomination. Friends. Delegates and fellow Americans, I humbly and gratefully accept your nomination for the presidency of the United States. With running mate Mike Pence by his side, the two turned their focus towards their rivals Hillary Clinton and Tim Kaine. Over the next few months, Trump hammered on Clinton's multiple scandals, including the FBI's investigation to her private server, her foundation's acceptance of foreign donations, and her close ties to the media. And at the presidential debates, Trump got to address these issues to Clinton face to face. I will release my tax returns against my lawyer's wishes when she releases her 33,000 emails that have been deleted. It's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Yeah, because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. So I'd like to ask you right now, why don't you give back the money that you've taken from certain countries that treat certain groups of people 
so horribly. So after long hinting at a presidential run. You've said, though, that if you did run for president, you believe you'd win. Well, I don't know. I think I'd win. I tell you what, I wouldn't go in to lose. I've never gone in to lose in my <laughs> life. And several historic endorsements. The border patrol agents, these are incredible people. They endorsed me. First time they've ever endorsed a presidential candidate. There is no doubt Donald Trump has left a mark on American politics, leaving behind a resonating message for those looking for a brighter future. I make this promise. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. God bless you and good night. I love you. Rachel Roboto, One America News.